What's up? I'm Alex the Entrepreneur and this video is your Strapi security checklist. I've been extremely thorough and I like to take a safe approach when it comes to security, especially when it comes to deploying Strapi to production. So in this video, I'm going to be as exhaustive as I can covering all the angles. So I want you to watch this entire video so that you have a, a full perspective as to your security options. And then when it comes to actually implementing them, use your best judgment and take action on the items that you think are reasonable. So we're going to be covering a bunch of stuff. Specifically, we're going to be covering the credentials being injected. So we're going to make sure you avoid leaking any development credentials. Then we're going to talk about validation, then sanitization. Then we're going to talk about the roles and permissions, policy usage, which I think is a huge deal, and then data leakage, which is the most subtle, the subtlest of uh, the problems you may be facing when dealing with Strapi. Let's get started right now. So the first thing is the credential injected. Uh, as of Strapi release, you actually have, uh, uh, literally, Strapi is already compatible with .env files. So you have no excuse not to use them. You should be using .env at all times. Additionally, you should be avoiding this example that I'm showing you here in the bottom right corner. You should avoid this. This is a bad example of leaking your development credentials. Whenever you're working with your uh, development, uh, um, even if you're working in your development environment, just use uh, injected variables anyway. It's uh, very simple to set up through a shared .env file, so make sure to do that. Next up is validation. Strapi's ORM provides a thin layer of validation. That means that uh, even though there is no real validation in Strapi as of now, uh, the, Strapi, the way the internals of Strapi works and the way the database works will make it so that most of the times whenever you're making a write uh, with uh, data that are, that are not corresponding, Strapi will try to cast them to a type that actually works. But most of the time, especially if you're working with uh, PostgreSQL, uh, those writes will actually fail. That means that if you try and insert a string into a number type, you will actually get an exception. However, you're going to get a very generic exception. You're just going to get a 500 from the server. You're not going to get uh, please use a specific type uh, kind of error messages. In order to have those, you could use Joy. Uh, this is something that I've done covering this video, but I would highly recommend you looking into Joy, which is uh, the de facto standard way to validate data types especially when it comes to NPM. So you can check it out at, at happy slash joy. You simply define a schema, as you can see here on the left, and then you validate it. And the validate will also generate an error object, which you can use to send back straight as, a, as an answer from your endpoint. So it's a very convenient tool, highly recommended. Next up, we got sanitization. It's a fact that Strapi provides sanitization at the ORM level. That's because both Mongoose and, uh, and Bookshelf provide sanitization of your data uh, through, for example, prepared statements and uh, all sort of escaping automatically. So technically speaking, sanitization is already provided at your RM level. However, especially when I have to deal with uh, user HTML inputs, I actually prefer to run my data through this package, which is called sanitize-html, which is also used for other CMSs. Um, and uh, it's a package that I highly, highly, highly recommend. And uh, so if you want to take that extra step, you can always just use Sanitize HTML, you sanitize your entity, and then you throw it in the database and you're good to go. So this is my recommendation when it comes to that. Roles and permissions are kind of a, a, a flaky, a flaky uh, compromise when it comes to how Strapi is set up. The problem is that roles and permissions are stored in the database, which makes it a little hard to migrate them. That's why I put this in the checklist. And basically, whenever you redeploy your Strap install, you just have to open up your roles and permission, and you have to check that they're all set up properly. So my recommendation would be to have a document uh, that may contain, for example, pictures or a list of all of your roles and permission or how you set them up. And you most likely want to uh, periodically check on that and ensure that everything works. And uh, so roles and permission actually typically ends up looking a little something like this, which is a very unfortunate scenario, but it's also a very practical one. You will end up you should not be doing this. This is like a, a red flag, but this is most likely what's going to happen, especially if you work with a lot of developers, because nobody's going to want to spend an hour trying to figure out what's going on. They're just going to approve all of the endpoints. In order to counteract that, uh, which, which I, I still avoid doing this, but in order to counteract it, I actually have an extremely strong approach by using policies. And the reason why I use policies is because you can commit policies to your source control, which means that you can have an image of all of, all of your routes, and I'm going to uh, preview that in a second, but basically you can have an image of all of your routes 
all set up with proper policies so that you can have an immediate high-level overview of what, what is required in order to interact with any uh, endpoint. In my opinion, this is the proper way to set it up because you can commit all of it to source control and that's why I highly recommend it. Uh, I go over policies in a separate video in the Complete Strapi course and if you're not part of the Complete Strapi course, I highly recommend you check that out. It's very inexpensive and it's basically a, a 20 plus hours course based on extreme practice in which you practice all of the things that I teach you and it also has theory snippets such as this video that I'm showing you right now. But that said, uh, I'm going to go briefly over the policies. One of the policies that you also can get from the documentation is a policy that checks if the user is logged in. This will ensure that even if somebody uh, by mistake they just activate all of the roles and permission, it will ensure that only a logged in user will be able to access the route. For more critical route, I like to use this policy called always fail, which makes it so that the route is completely unusable. This gives me the confidence that nobody can tamper with the route, but it still leaves administrator users, the one that access the Strapi admin panel, uh, able to delete and edit content types. So it's typically a good idea, especially if you're dealing with uh, uh, payments, logs, any kind of event, to just use this always fail policy, which will always return a failure, uh, so that you just, as, as an extra security measure, that's what I found. Additionally, uh, other policies that I cover are the is target user logged in, which basically ensures that you can only view your own data, and it's a great policy when it comes to showing orders, private data, basically, that has to do with a separate collection type, so a collection type that is not the user type. On the other end, if, you're, if you have to write a similar policy to show your own user profile data, you're going to have to write a, profile, uh, a policy called is my profile that checks that, you, uh, uh, that you're checking only your own specific profile. And I show you how to set this up and use them in the uh, complete strapi course. However, the, the, the quick rundown, the quick security tip that I have to give you is that you can just use these policies, you can put them in your Rouse JSON, and that way you're going to be sure that uh, all of your data is properly set up. The last thing, the last topic that I want to cover is called data leakage. And it's actually the most subtle one. And if you're interested in a consultation, you can take a consultation call with me on Code Mentor to talk about data leakage because unfortunately it's a very subtle and uh, uh, case by case uh, uh, issue. But I'm going to try my best to show you an example. So I have a Strapi install, which is a Strapi policies demo, which is a, a, a publicly available uh, example that I published in the complete Strapi course on GitHub. And basically you have your articles collection type, which is basically an article and it belongs to a user. And then I have my users, and my users are associated with uh, um, articles. So users may also have secret uh, credentials. So let's say this is an ash of a credit card, ash of credit card. This is something that you don't want to share, or an address, you don't want to share your address. This is supposed to be private, right? So this is a classic example of uh, data leakage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go on Postman, I'm going to try and make a GET request to the articles. And if I do, you'll see that whenever I retrieve the article, in this case I only have one article with associated with this user, you can see that I'm getting all of the info for my user, which means that the article's endpoint is leaking my user data. And this is a huge deal. This is basically putting you in violation of any European privacy law by default, and it's also probably putting you in a lot of trouble with your customers. So you definitely want to do a security audit for data leakage, and I'll show you how to solve this specific issue. So I'm going to go on my code, and uh, I'm going to show you where, I am, where I'm at. So basically, let's look at the API folder for a second. We're going to have the API folder, and we're going to have the extensions folder. Due to the fact that we extended the user profile, the extensions folder will contain a subfolder called users-permission, which contains the user profile inside of the models. So we're going to have users-permissions and then model subfolder and then user.settings.json, which represents the user. And you can see that I have a couple of uh, data fields that I don't necessarily want to be showing. Okay, the secret and the address. Additionally, so this is the user profile. Additionally, if I go in API slash article slash config slash, uh, no, my bad, in in API slash article slash models slash articles settings.json, you can see that I have my user profile data here. So what I can do in the article settings.json is I can set this user object uh, by going here on line 19, adding a comma and going on a new line, and I can set that to be private. I can type literally private colon true, 
And if I do that, literally this single line change, the single change of one line of code, makes it so that if I request my articles, I no longer am able to retrieve the user data, which basically makes it so that the articles are not leaking the users. However, I will still be able to use filters that are related to users, so I can still do all of the convenient stuff that Strapi will offer. So I can type users equals to one, and I will still be able to fetch the articles that the user wrote. So it is still gonna work. Additionally, whenever you're working with the articles collection type in Strapi, inside of the backend, you will still have access to the user data uh, in its entirety. You're still gonna be able to manipulate all of it, but simply you're not gonna be leaking that when you send it back as a API response. The same thing can be done, so I'm just gonna set it uh, again to public just for the sake of demonstration. The same approach could be done by cleaning up the user object. So you could go in the user.settings.json and you can set on any of these credentials, so let's say that the secret credit card info can be set to private as well. And perhaps even the address could be set to private. And from my experience, addresses are best uh, used as a relationship, so that way you have a little more granular settings in the security. But that basically means that if I make a new request, I'm not gonna be able to get that secret and that address which uh, uh, a malicious attacker may be interested in. So at this point, you have your tools to defend yourself. You clearly are gonna have to go through every single content type, every single relationship. Typically, relationships are where you wanna be very, uh, very careful with using the private field, uh, but especially with the user object. That said, if you need a security consultation or security audit when it comes to Strapi, we can um, arrange that on Code Mentor for a live session. It should be as simple as uh, setting up a screen share and just going through your uh, code together through a screen share. That said, let me know if you have any question related to security. I appreciate your time very much and I wish you an amazing day.